All right, so let's take a look at some uh, parabolas, like something like y equals x squared minus 4x plus 5. Let's find its zeros and see what happens. And now, um, if we try and factor this, it's kind of tricky. We don't have anything that multiplies to 5 that adds to negative 4 that's, that we can think of, at least. So I'm going to have to use quadratic formula. And so remember, quadratic formula to solve uh, quadratic forms uh, is when y is 0, x would equal negative b plus or minus the square root, b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. I'm going to clean up that c a little bit, or try to. Um, okay, there we go. And so, and oh yeah, and remember like in this case a is 1, b is negative 4, c is 5. So let me plug in those values. So negative b, so negative negative 4 plus or minus the square root of b squared, so negative 4 squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. Negative negative 4 is positive 4. Uh, negative 4 squared is 16 minus 20, 4 times 1 times 5, all over 2. So I have 4 plus or minus the square root of negative 4 over 2. So you're thinking about square root of negative 4. Well, i, there's an i involved, right? So it's 4 plus or minus square root of negative 4. The square root of 4 is 2. Square root of negative 1 is i divided by 2. And notice both those things are divided by that 2, the 4 and the 2i. So if I divide those both by 2, I get um, 2 plus or minus i. So my zeros for this are uh, 2 plus i and 2 minus i. Right. So what I solved was when y is 0 in this case. Wow, so there they are. So let me think about that for one second. 2 plus i. What's that saying is if I take this 2 plus i and I plug it back into here and I calculate that out, that should spit out a 0. Let me check that on my, on my calculator. Why not? So uh, my equation was x squared minus 4x uh, plus 5. And if I have hit enter right there, there's an x stored in there already. It just evaluated it for x being equal to 3.646. Let me see. Put my calculator into... Yep, it's in complex mode. So I'm going to say... my. I thought my answer was 2 plus i. Now that's just a number, so I should be able to store it in x. And then I should be able to say when x is that value, 2 plus i, what does this evaluate to? And it should be 0. Yeah, it is. So if I plug this 2 plus i in, square it, subtract 4 times it, and add 5, I get 0. This is a 0 for that. Uh, I did it with 2 minus i as well. 2 minus i was uh, the other solution that I got. This is what the quadratic formula told me. So I'll put that in for x and just check it, make sure that it gives me a 0 as well. It does. Cool. Okay, so since those are the zeros... Where would those show up on this graph? Well, let's see. f of x, uh, my equation is x squared minus 4x plus 5. Nowhere. There are there are no uh, there are no x-intercepts here. So this we have a we have a little distinction here between um, what we call zeros and x-intercepts. So x-intercepts are values where uh, the, the graph literally intersects with the x-axis. Zeros are any number that if we plug it into the equation, um, this spits out a zero. So all x-intercepts are zeros, but not all zeros are x-intercepts. Because it looks like our, some of our zeros can, be, can have an imaginary component to them, written in this complex form. Let's think about the vertex of this thing. Vertex. Uh, two ways to think about vertex is, you know, if I average these and divide by two, because there's still supposed to be some symmetry to this, 
I don't know. Like when I knew these, I could average them, divide by two, and that tells me the x value. Let me let me try that. X plus i, uh, sorry, two plus i, plus two minus i divided by two. That's four. I minus i is zero over two, which is two. Yeah, interesting. So my center, my x value, is still at two. Does that check out on my graph? Yeah, my vertex is at is at two. It looks like it's at two one. So, boop. Sorry about that. So if I plug this two back in, it'll spit out a one. Two squared minus four times two plus five. So my vertex would be the point two one. And I could get at that with the negative b over 2a part. Remember for x, x equals negative b over 2a. That'll give me the x part. So the plus or minus part, notice how that, that, that plus or minus i really came from, from this part divided by the 2, right? 2i two divided by 2, the plus or minus part. This part right here tells me the x part of the vertex. So if a, uh, if a quadratic has imaginary zeros to it, it means it doesn't cross the x-intercept at all. Uh, the, I'm sorry, the x-axis at all. It doesn't intercept it at all. Let's do one more problem like that, just using quadratic formula to find, uh, to find zeros. So y equals x squared minus 10x plus 29. I could try and factor this. Uh, I'm not going to be able to factor it. And if it's not factorable, and I don't mean I can't factor it, like I mean it's literally not factorable, that means that uh, it will have imaginary zeros. It doesn't have any x-intercepts. So let's do that. We use quadratic formula again. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. Woo -wee. All right, negative negative 10 is 10, plus or minus. Uh, 10 squared is uh, 100. And then I have, that's going to be minus 4 times 29, which is 116. 2 times 1 is 2. So I have 10 plus or minus the square root of negative 16 over 2. Oh, looky there. 10 plus or minus uh, square root of 16 is 4 the square root of negative 1 is i that's divided by 2 so i divide those both by 2 and i get 5 plus or minus 2i so notice i have two zeros here one of them being 5 plus 2i 5 minus 2i um, these zeros that have a imaginary component will always come in this form blah plus or minus da 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 uh, and if you think about the structure it comes from, when it comes from this quadratic formula, that has to happen, right? Because it's always plus or minus the same value. So these will always come in these pairs. So knowing that, that looks like there's my, uh, my zeros to this. If I were to graph it, which I am going to do, uh, x squared minus 10x plus 29. You can see it doesn't cross. Look at that vertex at 5, 4. I can tell uh, that that vertex was going to, the x part was going to be 5. Whoops, sorry about that. You might see it uh, in the complex number, but you also know the negative b over 2a part. That part of the uh, quadratic formula gives you the x part of the vertex. Yeah, so our vertex is going to be 5. Plug the 5 back in, you get a 4. And uh, that's a uh, that's a graph of it.